Welcome back. If you've been uh, following my sequence on uh, using R for statistical analyses, uh, this is the site that uh, I used for this. Uh, it's R Tutorials, Blogspot, uh, R Tutorial Series uh, dot blot, blogspot dot com. Anyway, this one is uh, on two-way repeated measures ANOVA. So I refer you to this site for the explanation. I'm just going to uh, go through it with not much. Uh, uh, description of the things that we're doing just really to demonstrate what's happening. So what we had looked at previously was repeated measures ANOVA but univariate and we um, ended that with the multivariate approach where is it here? Multivariate approach and when we ran the ANOVA we used multivariate equals false so uh, we'll see in this one we're doing essentially the same thing but we are not using we, we don't include this term we run the multivariate and what I liked about this site as well is that it kind of helps you understand how the tables are laid out and, and what's uh, happening uh, so let's go to R uh, first this is the uh, PDF that I had distributed uh, so I have some other sources uh, other than the R tutorial, um, repeated measures ANOVA, as I showed you, uh, to help me to uh, figure some of this out. So in this one, uh, again, what I've done with the GUI preferences here is set the size to 16, so hopefully you're seeing things uh, better. Now I'm going to open the script that I had created for this in my R files. This is the uh, code for two-way repeated measures. Okay. Yes. And so we run this. And uh, as a previous one, and. and the uh, site I just showed you for running the one ways, it was recommended to run this code uh, before you run any ANOVAs. Uh, so I just uh, do that all the time now. And so I'm going to have to pull up two tables, one we're going to call data and one I data. So this is the first one, data. And I need to get the uh, GSE 31901 sample metabolite levels. Okay, so I've got that in my R files. So this one here and you can see there's the next one the I data that we're going to bring in so we have that we'll take a look at these in just a moment and now let's get the I data our files I data so we now have those so let me show you the oops over here data. So this is our table. We have a subject ID. In this case we only have uh, a subset of them that had complete um, uh, pre and, and postprandial, so baseline and postprandial. So in this uh, uh, version of our data set we have set up a separate column uh, for each um, uh, type of fatty acid. So we have uh, fatty acid, and then as we'll see, uh, time, which we're considering as zero, and then four hours, or pre, uh, excuse me, baseline and postprandial. So our two factors are the type of fat uh, in the meal challenge, SFA, MUFA, or PUFA, at three levels. So that's one factor, and then the other is uh, time uh, for our two-way uh, layout. Uh, but this is the, the first one uh, that is showing it uh, this way. So we have our time shown here as well. So these are concatenated. We have factor 1 and factor 2 concatenated together. And then in the I data, what we have is we have it um, <coughs> uh, separated out as our diet, uh, the first here, and then the second, the time, baseline and postprandial. So you can see... Uh, what this um, setup of the two tables is doing and then we bind it into a matrix so that's the next thing that we do so data bind Let me make sure I get all the way to the end here 
what is it doing? Why is it being so difficult to me? Hold my shift button and select it all. Right arrow to select it. Oops. <laughs> it wants to go too far. Okay. So now we have created a, a table called data bind. Let me click over here. Data bind. So you see what uh, it has done, right? It has bound them <clears throat> in this way. So uh, data point one one, SFA uh, baseline, and then one two. All right, one, three, one, four. So it has set them up uh, that way. I haven't really sat. So these are the same. Eight, five, three, four, three, four, two, three, four, four, one, two. So it hasn't changed the layout. It did not transpose our table. It just created it uh, as a matrix. So the uh, software uh, can refer back to this table. Uh, and uh, pull these terms out as matched by these combinations uh, in order to uh, so here's our our six there and then uh, seven subjects okay so and sorry I didn't explain that well but maybe I don't understand it all that well so now we can uh, do a linear model of that. So the LM is the linear model and the SKM is the, the table that we created. Right? So we get coefficients from our linear model. Then uh, we activate the car library. So if you watch the previous uh, one on the one-way repeated measures, this might seem familiar. And now we do the ANOVA. Okay, and we get the same message, only an intercept, but that's not a concern. You can go and read about that in the uh, discussions on the original website there. So uh, I can take a look at analysis here. Okay, I guess it didn't didn't like doing that, but if we do the summary of analysis, I'll come back to my code. The summary works uh, rather nicely. So let me move this out of the way so we can scroll up to see what we got here. Okay, so there's where we typed it in. So it's a type 3 repeated measure, say a MANOVA, right? So uh, we did not put multivariate false equals false in here, so it came up as a MANOVA. Uh, it's looking at this intercept, which we don't need to uh, pay attention to. So then it looked like looked at diet, right? And then here's our uh, typical. Well, these are the different tests for the multivariate test for diet. None of them showed a significant effect of diet. And then time. And again, these uh, multivariate tests for time. We got a significant effect of time. So the pre versus the post meal effect. So the pre-meal uh, is uh, overnight fasting, and then four hours after the meal challenge is the postprandial. So we would expect that there'd be a difference in, uh, you know, most metabolites of relevance uh, after the meal challenge, but there doesn't appear to be any difference depending upon the type of fat. Um, so uh, you may have seen this same data on this same metabolite that I did a non-parametric on, and we got differences, uh, but that was not um, a repeated measures um, paired uh, comparison. And um, now we're looking at diet by time, and uh, there's no uh, significant uh, interaction between diet and time. And then finally here we get our uh, typical uh, type of two-way ANOVA table. Uh, we're not looking at the intercept, uh, but for diet uh, there's no significant effect. And we go through this, we have the sum of squares, the number of degrees of freedom, the error of the sum of squares, uh, the density degrees of freedom, 
I guess is what that is, uh, our F value and then uh, probability greater than F. Uh, so you can see that, that the uh, there's no significant effect of diet. There is a significant effect of time, as the stats above showed us. And um, there is no significant interaction. Okay. Note that this approach does not uh, apply the non-sphericity uh, uh, test. Uh, so you can uh, look up and, and look at some of the discussions at the two sites we're at on the, the relevance of that. Now uh, what we need to do in order to run a post hoc test is we need to delete uh, one of the columns. in our data table. So let me show you data again. So you see the subject ID, we've got to get rid of that in order to run our post hoc. Okay, we're going, what we're going to do is get rid of this column, transpose this, um, similar to what we did with the repeated measures ANOVA, uh, the one way. And so um, it's more of a problem if that column stays for this one. So here you see we, I'll just run both of these. I, um, I identified the the table data and the dollar sign subject telling it which subject ID telling it which um, column to look at subject ID in this table right uh, and then make it null disappears right when we hit data again we see our Everything else is the same. We just don't have that column anymore. So now we can do the Z stack like we did before. So we and I just kept the, the name Z for the table. So that transposed it. right? And now we need to rename our columns here. And that's the next step so that they are appropriate. And the first column is the level of our the, the level of our metabolite, the FPP, furnaceal pyrophosphate, if you've been following along. Uh, and then the second column is our group, right? So the the combination, the concatenated uh, uh, type of fatty acid for the meal challenge and the time, in this case postprandial or uh, baseline. Okay, so now that we have the table in that format, uh, we can uh, run a one-way on that, which isn't necessary. It just gives us a one-way table to run the Tukis on. Right, so we can uh, we don't need to give this any attention. It just uh, we needed the ANOVA to get some information for the Tukis to run. Now we run the two keys, so I'm just going to do all three of these. We just ran the two key and then plotted it. So after running that the one way in the data, we just needed to do that to get some information for this two key calculation. Um, and then we took a look at the two key table, the result. And so you can see it here. Um, MUFA postprandial versus MUFA baseline. Let's just go down here. So we see for each of these comparisons, we got the difference, the lower 95th percent uh, confidence interval and the upper 95th. And then the, the last column would be the adjusted p-value, uh, but uh, it couldn't fit, so it just conveniently pumped it down here. So this comparison makes sense. It is not significant. It is not less than 0.05. It's a trend. Right, and SFA postprandial to SFA baseline is not significant. Now, where's our PUFA to PUFA? And PUFA to PUFA is not significant. When we plot the uh, TK, uh, as you see over here, it plots the confidence intervals. And any confidence interval that crosses the zero line is cannot be significant. And so here we see the SFA postprandial versus the baseline, this lower one, it crosses so it is not significant, which is what we saw up here, uh, the 0.39. Um, so none of these were significantly different for the meaningful comparisons. Those that were, uh, their lines did not cross.